My friends, welcome. Eric Andreas here, Guitar Sage here today uh, for the next hour here. Uh, by the way, it's 8.10 at noon in case you are wondering whether this is live or not. Uh, if you're watching right now at noon central time on 8.10, it is live. Otherwise, just check your watch. If it's not that time, then, um, then it's not live. But welcome. Friends, uh, today I'm going to be showing you my most direct method to playing fingerstyle guitar. So uh, we're going to have a blast here for one hour. I'm going to be showing you techniques, walking you through some bits and pieces. Uh, I just dropped a course on this. It's basically four courses in one. The link for that's in the description below. If you want to get you know more information about that, click on that and it'll give you that more information. But um, we're going to get into a lesson here in just one second. I'll tell you really quick, quickly about the course because we're having tons of people pour into this thing already. We're very excited about this, this because it's been a long awaited course. Um, and it, it, these are the four things that are in it. Basically, uh, we start off with beginner, you know, the beginner, the, the, the bits and pieces of the uh, building a foundation, if you will, on fingerstyle guitar. I'm going to be talking about that today. Uh, then we go into intermediate and advanced techniques, uh, pinch picks and uh, advanced pinch picks and those sorts of things. Uh, and then we go into, I teach you um, how to play a, a popular, it's actually a, a very popular pop tune. Uh, and I created a, uh, a transcription of this song that's mainly, it's all synthesizer really. And I created a, uh, I transcribed it for guitar, and I did that a few years ago, and it actually went viral, had uh, several hundred thousand views. And all that being said, that is the third part of the course, and then the fourth part of the course is Travis picking. So I'm going to get to as much as I can here in one hour with you guys and getting to questions and what have you because uh, I'm very excited about this. And like I said, we got a, a ton of folks who've already jumped into this thing and we just, we just talked about it this morning. So um, yeah, all that being said, here we go. Jeffrey, welcome, Wendy Ace. I'm seeing some folks from, our, from uh, UGS Pro in here. Manuel, Lana, Danny, Kidzo, Riverboy, and the Bearded Preacher. Beautiful, uh, several folks from the Unstoppable Guitar System uh, that are in here, so welcome friends. Love to see you. Okay. All right. We're going to jump into it straight away. Uh, and then if you have questions, I'm going to be looking right here. I'll bring that question onto the screen. And because what's the, the most important thing to me here is that you learn at least the basics of finger style guitar and that I answer any questions that you might have. So, uh, at one o'clock, somewhere around then, we'll be, we'll be ending the broadcast because I do have another broadcast inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System Pro. So there you go. Lewis from UGS is here and Mr. Uh, Median54, uh, beautiful, thank you, Cow Cowboy Strummer. All right, here we go, friends, let's talk about it. So, um, finger style guitar is the art of playing guitar with our fingers whether we're using the fingernail or we're just using our fingertips. And so one might say, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just use a pick all the time? Because I use a pick like 95% of the time, 90% of the time, I'd say. It just depends on what I'm doing. But the other, say, 10% of the time is important because there are things that you can do playing finger style guitar that you cannot do using a pick, okay? And so, uh, when we're approaching the guitar from more, say, like of a polyphonic instrument, or like we, like we might would a piano, and most, mm, I wouldn't even say most, some instruments are uh, monophonic, some are polyphonic, and what we mean by that, phonic meaning voice, and mono meaning one or poly meaning many once. So say like a flute, your phone or something like that. As opposed to a piano or a guitar, it's multi, okay? You have, it's multiphonic. And so because of that, you can play a whole chord, right? But you could also play individual notes, right? A 
a bass line and a melody at the same time. You could even play harmonies on top of that. And in this case here, it's as if I've got a bass player playing the, um, the bass line and I have an, another instrumentalist playing the melody. That's the bass line. And in this case here, it's like a, um, almost like a disco bass line, right? Like we're, we're using octaves and doing this bebopping around, right? And in this case here, I'm actually playing it on two different strings, so we could say that even that's polyphonic, right? But then if we want to introduce a melody, I can do that while I'm playing the bass line. Okay, and so, that's why we would want to do that. If we're arpeggiating chords, right? Um, so, there's many, many uses for it. Not only uh, do you get to connect with your guitar in a way that is uh, both um, kinesthetic, is that the word I'm thinking of? Maybe that's not the word, but, basic, but, but touch, um, which allows you to express yourself in ways that if you are pick, that you're not going to be as expressive. In fact, uh, even though I don't play this way, there's a few guitar players, say like Jared Nichols, who's a great lead guitar player, uh, who doesn't use a pick or even Lindsey Buckingham, guys like that, uh, where they're just using their fingertips. Now, I'm not advising you to do that, but when you hear them play, it has a certain sound to it, and they're able to manipulate notes uh, that just the guitar pick is not gonna do. It's a subtle thing, but mm, when it comes to playing really, really well, a lot of times it's the subtle things that make the big difference. So, um, so all that being said, there's reasons why we want to play finger style guitar. So now that we know that, let's talk about the basics and how to proceed and how to get good at this. Because if you think that you can't play finger style guitar, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it. I love to say it, but I don't like to tell you that you're wrong, but you're wrong because you can play finger style guitar. It's literally just like anything else in that if you practice the correct things, you get the reward. You get to be able to play finger style guitar. So it's literally just a matter of practice. There's not a guitar player that I've taught and I've taught over 10,000 one-on-one -on -one lessons. There is not a guitar player that I've ever started off playing finger style guitar that thought it was not awkward at first. Okay. So if, if you're like, man, I've tried to play finger style guitar and it's awkward. Cool. Well, with every, every student that I've ever taught, they, they think it's awkward. I've never met a guitar player that thought playing guitar was not awkward at first, right? It's not like it's um, like, I don't know, something very, very simple like uh, rolling over as a, as a baby or something like that or walking or even walking, right? Babies take a long time to walk. So um, it, it is learned, okay? So that being said, let's talk about the specific things that you need to do in order to get good at this. And so just like anything else, building a building, building a business, establishing a relationship, the foundation is the most important thing, right? First impressions, right? You never get a second chance to make a first impression. The foundation is, is the most important thing. So this, friends, if you listen to this part and this part only, you will have a foundation that's stronger than a lot of guitar players out there who just kind of dibble dabble uh, I just made that up, dibble dabble at uh, finger style, okay? Yeah, sure, there's people that kind of pick with their first finger and their thumb and they can get, get the job done kind of, but beyond that, they're gonna have some issues, okay? So there are some basic rules um, that are gonna help you with this. So um, let's 
delve into those, okay? All right, here we go. So first off, when we're playing finger style guitar, you can have nails, you cannot have nails. You can see mine here are quite, uh, let's see if I can get that where it focuses in, right? So these are um, not super, super long. Uh, they're just enough to touch the strings. And in fact, this morning, I gave them just a little bit of a, a haircut, a little bit too much, in my opinion, because I, I, I'm not getting enough nail on there. But guess what? They grow, so it's okay. So if you want to play with your fingernails, that's great. If you don't, just play with your fingertips, that's great. Doesn't matter. It depends on, well, it depends on what you like, the sound that you like. Nylon string guitars, classical guitars, Spanish guitars. Um really like to be finger picked because they're duller sounding, they're darker sounding instrument. Dull as in this, as opposed to bright. Right, here's, that's brighter, this is duller sounding. So, uh, nylon string guitar is a duller sounding instrument, so it wants something bright, okay? So when you approach it with the nails, you're gonna get a much better, brighter, louder sound than if you were just using say the fleshy part of your fingers. However, when you're talking about steel string guitar, uh, because the strings are already pretty bright, you can get away with just playing on your fingertips. Okay, say take, take a guitar player like Joe Robinson, buddy of mine, a uh, phenomenal world-class player, will play uh, with, sometimes he'll play with finger picks or thumb pick, but um, the other fingers, he's not using his fingernails. Okay, he's just using his fingertips uh, and he gets a great sound of, out of his guitar. Okay, so it's really up to you. Um, steel strings tend to, t tend to break the, the fingernails a little bit and, and kind of chip away at them, whereas nylon strings are much softer. So they can, they can, you can play plenty and they're not gonna tear into your, into your fingernails. I have found that, that I'm one of the fewer players out there, finger style players, that, which I don't elevate my, my status to a finger style player. I can play finger style, but not say like somebody like Joe Robinson or Tommy Emanuel or somebody like that. But that being said, I find that I'm kind of in the minority in regards to using nails with steel string. Okay, so classical players, yes, all day long. They're gonna go players, steel string players, whether it's electric or acoustic, are not using nails. I leave that up to you, okay? There's a reason for that, probably because their nails keep messing up. For me, it's been, uh, it's just, I, I like the sound of it better, it's brighter. Uh, but I can't tell you, I can't say that I haven't had issues with it, with nails breaking and, and, and cracking, and you gotta, it's, there's, ma there's maintenance involved, okay? All right, here we go. So we got those basics out of the way. Let's talk about what's going on here with the hand. So if you notice the right hand here, we have, um, number one, my, my deformed hand from hand bites and, or from dog bites and uh, arthritis and everything else when I was younger. But notice that that pinky is very, very short. So it makes playing finger style guitar with the pinky kind of unnecessary. So really we're just using the thumb first, second, and third, okay? And it's not to say we can't use the pinky. You might use it every now and then, but for the most part, you're not gonna, okay? And so, think about that. Just, you're just using that. Now, the very first thing I want you to do is I want you to do what we call uh, a resting position. But I wanna give some theory as to why this is very, very important, first off. So the thumb is active but it's not as active typically as the melodic fingers, or I should say there's times when it's not. Sometimes it's more active. But the thumb is going to take care of strings six, five, and four. Six, five, and four, the three lowest strings. Now these are rules of thumb, by the way, and we can change them up whenever we want, and I do on occasion when it's necessary, okay? So for instance, if you're working on your car and you got a and you got a wrench, but you need a hammer and you got a, and the hammer's way over there and it's just one little thing you got to do. You just got to loosen up a nut. You might not get the hammer, but you'd use a wrench. But really, the hammer is going to be the more proper tool. Kind of bend the rules a little bit here, but 99% of the time, the thumb's going to take care of strings six, five, and four. 
fingers one, two, and three are going to take care of strings three, two, and one, respectively. So just like that. So what I want you to do is to get used to this concept, what I want you to do is take your thumb right now and put it on the sixth string. Fingernail or no fingernail, I don't care. Whatever you want. But just put your thumb right there on that sixth string. Then take your ring finger and place it on the first string. Okay, let's get a little close up here. Okay, so the thumb is right here on that sixth string. You're resting it. It's just resting there. It's not picking or anything. And then that ring finger is resting on the first string. That's it. And what I want you to do is I want you to get accustomed to just doing this. Okay, you can do it right now, not looking at the guitar. What I'm doing is I'm just feeling the strings, I'm putting my thumb right there, and I'm putting my ring finger right here, okay? Friends, this beginner stuff is the most important stuff. Don't, don't be anxious to try to skip over it, okay? Super important. This is literally the bulk of what it is you're gonna be doing. If you learn these things here, you can, you can play finger style, okay? Or at least you, you're, you're gonna be in the right ballpark, okay? So again, hand off the guitar, come to the guitar. There's a reason I'm having you do this is because there are times where you wanna just be able to touch the guitar like this and, and have all your fingers land in the right place. One of the things that people complain about in the beginning is they're like, I'm just kinda like clawing at the guitar. Well, right, because you're in this resting position. So you do that, thumb up here, uh, ring finger on the first string. And then take on the second string. So that's the uh, middle finger on the second string. And take your first finger and put it on the third string, just like that, okay? So they should just rest like that. Easy enough, okay? And your thumb is gonna rest right here. This is called resting position, by the way. And if you just get used to doing this, I have my hand off the guitar, I'm not looking at the guitar, I'm looking at my screen, then I can rest there real easily. I can see my pinky, it's just chilling out. It can be out here, it can rest, just don't even worry about it. It's a non-point. So there you go, you're in resting position. Now, you could also rest position by putting your thumb on the fifth string, because there are times where, say, we're playing in an A minor chord, or the fourth string, you could do that. Okay, so that's resting position. It's the number one thing you need to learn because that it means that the right fingers are gonna be in the right place. Now again, it doesn't mean that I, that I couldn't do a roll. If I wanted to pick string six, five, four, three, six, five, four, three, um, I would I'd bring these three fingers down here. And we just said that they really are for strings three, two, one. Okay, again. We need fingers to play the guitar, so, so you need to move these fingers around and do it, okay? So there you go. So, and now here's the first exercise that I want you to do. First off, I want you to just strike that low string there with your thumb. You can use a fingernail if you want, but you're hitting it really with like the side of your thumb. A finger pick will allow a pick to actually point into the guitar with your with your thumb being sideways like that, and that's why folks like it. Whereas fingers one, two, and three are automatically pointed into the guitar, so you're, you're fine there, okay? All right, so this, this first exercise, basically what we're gonna do is this. You're going to pick, well first off, get in the resting position, right? Thumb, ring, second, First, that's resting position. You should be able to not look at the guitar and be able to grab that. If you can't, practice it later, okay? I've done it only a million times or so, so it's very convenient for me to do, very easy. But if you haven't done it, you're gonna need to practice it. Everybody has to go through the gauntlet, which is just practicing, right? And so get used to doing that. Then the first exercise that you're gonna do, um, I taught this one to uh, Kirk Hammett many years ago, and they, they wrote a song called um, Nothing else matters. Uh, I'm joking, but this is the exercise. It's just uh, strings six, three, two, one, and then come back to two and three. 
The song is in six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sense? And what we're doing when we do this is we're allowing the strings to sing out. I'm not doing this. It's difficult to actually do, but you may be tempted to do that at first. My hand is floating. So if we're looking at this kind of, you know, you can see my hand there, it's floating, but touching right here with my, with my elbow, right? So I'm touching there, but I'm floating here. You can float or you can take your pinky and, and do that and anchor that. Now, I will tell you that people have different opinions about that and at the end of the day, uh, you know, opinions are like other things and they stink. So, uh, it's just opinions. So, try not to get too hung up on that sort of thing, okay? If, it, if it's working for you, do it. Now, when you're playing classical guitar, it's thought of as a no-no because uh, traditionally the nylon string guitar, if you're going to do a concert as a, uh, you know, a classical guitar player, back in the day you didn't have microphones, I mean, way back in the day, right? So you had to step out on stage and that guitar needed to project as much as possible. Steel strings, not so much, it's not a problem, but if I, if I touch the top of the guitar here, it doesn't affect the sound. If this were a nylon string guitar and I touched the top of the guitar while I was playing, it would mute the sound audibly, like you would be able to hear it. So, for nylon string or classical flamenco style guitar, you don't plant that pinky. It's a big no-no, okay? Because not only does it take the sound away from the guitar, but because people aren't used to seeing that because it takes the sound away from the guitar, it's kind of thought of as low class, okay? That being said, on, an, on a steel string guitar, and that's if you care about what people think about, I don't. So, <laughs> if I wanted to do that, I'm gonna do it. But, uh, but it does make sense from a volume standpoint, okay? Now, when it comes to, not, to steel string guitar, you can, you can put your, your pinky there, that's fine. It's not gonna take away from the sound of the guitar, okay? Maybe a teeny bit, but I mean, you can hear it's... I can't hear a difference, I don't know about you. Uh, that being said, let's talk about banjo for a minute. And it, if you're a banjo player, it's kind of thought as, as being low class if you don't put your pinky down. And I don't mean low class, but people are like, what are you doing? They want your pinky planted, and in fact, if you can plant your ring finger, that's even more so, because when you play the banjo, you're just using first, uh, using thumb, second, and th thumb, first, and second. So you really want to plant that. So there's all different views of this, right? But if you're playing steel string, and you want to plant that pinky, plant your pinky, it's fine. Or if you want to float, float, okay? So let's go back to the exercise. So again, let's do this right here. We got... Now you may not be able to play, really matter friends. What matters is, is that you're playing it accurately with the right fingers, preferably in some sort of timing, so it sounds like music and it's not just like, you know, we don't want that sporadic sound, we want a nice smooth sound, so slow it down to whatever speed you need in order to do that, okay? Okay, so. That is the resting position, and that's exercise number one. Now, uh, let me check in to some questions, and really quick, what's up, TC? Um, we're gonna get to some questions here, if I see any. Uh, and while I'm doing that, click that link below. It should open up in another tab, and um, I have a course that covers everything that we're talking about today, but in much more detail, obviously. It's four courses in one. I won't. I will, I'll, I won't, I'll spare you the details because if you click on the link, you'll get the details, okay? All right. Oh, look at this. Eight years in, you've been with me since day one. Thank you for all the help. Oh, TC, thank you so much for letting me know that. That means a lot. Thank you, thank you, friend. So cool. All right. Marine Mama is loving some finger picking, P-I-M-A, yep, let's talk about that. Um, so if, you, if you're playing guitar, 
nylon string, or I'm sorry, uh, finger style guitar. In classical, typically in classical music, you will see P-I-M-A, okay? Uh, that's, this is for, the, the P is the thumb, um, I is for the index. So you, you think about it like this. It's actually related to, I think, Spanish or, a, uh, actually Spanish, I think it is, words. So it's like pulgar, indice, uh, medio and annular or something like that. But nonetheless, you can think about it like pick or plectrum. So if you're using your thumb, a lot of people pick the guitar with their thumb, right? Um, that's, that's fine. No judgment. Not a little bit of judgment. Um, okay, the thumb, right? So P, pick. Think about that, P. I for index finger. M for middle finger, right? You got that on the road today. Um, and and A, you can think about anniversary ring, your anniversary ring. So P-I-M-A, easy to remember, right? Um, so that being said, you'll see this in transcriptions sometimes if you're wondering, you'll see the, the music and then it'll say, okay, underneath that note, you'll see a P or I or M or A, that'll take it. And that's what we got there with the P-I-M-A, you'll see that, okay? Okay, beautiful. Schnauzer Dad 2, been doing these exercises, beautiful. And by the way, friends, here, here's the deal. If you're like, Eric, I love your free stuff. I'm never gonna buy anything from you. That's totally fine, I'm here. That's why I'm doing free stuff. For those folks that just need some free stuff and they don't wanna get the, get the uh, high octane stuff, that's fine. Take advantage of this course if you'd like to buy it. If you don't want to buy it, the very minimum I want you to do is take advantage of my free course that I give you at yourguitarstage.com 30, and I have lots of finger picking exercises, and I think it's in the very last video, the finger style video. So take advantage of that at the very minimum, okay? If you're just like, ah, I just like free, ah, I'm not gonna get anything else, it's fine. Okay, not offended. Okay, so, uh, Beautiful. Thank you, my friend. So this is, so French, it's very similar. Pima is French for, it's, yes. And so French is one way to do it, but um, I think it originated in Spain, since with the Spanish guitar, and it's the pulgar, indice, uh, medio, and uh, annular. So yeah, which, which obviously French and Spanish uh, language is similar, just like English is somewhat similar. There's things that we, because we're all pulling from uh, Latin. So makes sense, right? Sure. Okay, good, good, good. Here we go. We're going. Um, I don't see any other questions, so let's keep going. And Mike just posted uh, the link there, okay? So check that out, friends. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so we have uh, a resting position. Friends, I told you that the foundation is the most important thing. So as we continue on through the next half hour, these things are still very, very important, but you got the, the I'm telling you the, the most important stuff up front, okay? So that when you go into this course, you're gonna be like, dude, I'm ahead of the game. I'm gonna crush this. Okay, or if you're like, dude, I'm never buying a course ever in my life, but I'd still like to play finger style. Thanks, Eric, I appreciate it. Then you're gonna have the bits and pieces that you need to be a beast at this, okay? So, resting position, you got that. You got the, the exercises that I'm giving you. If you don't get the course, you've got, if you don't get the finger style course, I just hooked you up with a course that has a PDF in it, uh, has a finger style lesson in it with a ton of exercises. At least take advantage of that, friends, okay? Uh, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. So I'm setting you up here for success, all right? So we got resting position, and then we got that exercise one, if you will. Okay. Now, the next thing that I will show you is, um, is something that you could do just arpeggiating, and then I might show you a little bit of kids here. But essentially, when we're playing a chord progression, okay, 
I don't show this one very often, but this is a really important lesson. And it's a good concept to understand. When you're playing a chord progression, you almost always, like 99.999999% of the time, you play that bass line, the thumb is the first note of a chord when you introduce it. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, like for instance, right? Heard the world's a secret chord. You know that song, right? So if the, if the chord is a C, I start off with that C bass note and then arpeggiate the rest of the chord, arpeggiate the rest of the chord. And then we have a walk down, we have a passing note, which is technically like a G slash B in the bass. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just a B note. So A minor chord, look what I'm doing. I'm starting on that A note first. Now, so for some of you, you're like, oh yeah, I've never actualized that, but that makes a lot of sense. And others of you are like, oh, huh, new, okay, cool. So, but either way, start off your chords with that bass note. So if you're arpeggiating, whoops. Right? And so some might say, well, how do you know to reset the pattern or the pattern? Like, how come you're not going? Um, let's see, I can, I'm going to try to mess this up and it's going to be difficult because it's so hard wired into me to do it right. So, I can't even do it. It won't even make sense. So, um, but the point is here you have one, two, three, four, five, and then you have one note in there that's part of the six, which so, so we got to play the bass note and then we start into another chord. So it's like one, we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So if we're just playing strict kind of like block chords with six notes, then we're just going to complete that um, nothing else matters exercise, right? I'm just going three, four, five, six, one, two, 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 three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. So, um, but if we have little notes and little things we want to do in between, then you do those and you start the pattern over when you go to a new chord, okay? This will make sense as you're moving along. It's a little bit more intermediate type of discussion, not for so much for today, okay? But you could. Right, so I'm throwing in some bass lines and that sort of thing there. Uh, <clears throat> Something else I was gonna tell you about that. Uh, what was I gonna tell you? Oh, inside outside picking. Okay, so inside outside picking, this is this is covered in the course as well, but um, so the thumb is gonna play whatever bass note it's gonna play. So if it's a G chord, it's gonna play a G bass note, usually, unless you have some other reason that you need to play another note. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna be playing the, the letter name of the chord. So if it's a G chord, you're gonna play the bass note of the G chord first, which is a G. Uh, if it's an E minor chord, you're gonna play the bass note of the E minor, which is an E first. If it's an A, it's an A. If it's an A major, it's an A. If it's an A minor, it's an A. If it's an A7, it's an A. If it's an A minor 7, it's an A. It's just whatever the bass note is, right? So, so if you want to take this exercise that we've done, the, 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 the we'll call it uh, Nothing Else Matters from Metallica's song that starts off like that. We could do this with any chord, and I would advise you to. So take an E minor and do that. Take an A minor and do that. So when we go for, to the E minor, you'll notice that my thumb, that's an E minor. See, I'm playing that sixth string right there. But if I want to play the A minor, I'm going to put my thumb here. Play that A bass note, right? If I'm going to play the C chord, I'm still on the same string. If I'm going to play a D chord, 
I'm gonna go to this D now, right? I got because I'm gotta play that bass note. But these guys stayed the same. They stayed on one, two, and three. Okay. Now that being outside picking, okay, because I'm playing the outside string, I could play the inside string, right? And it's gonna get a different sound. So listen to this. Outside picking. Here's inside picking. Now this is what, yet something else that makes finger style guitar so awesome is that only thing I have to do is reposition my fingers, not my left hand fingers, not my fretting fingers, but my finger uh, picking fingers. This is outside, playing strings, you know, one, two, three, or I could play strings two, three, four. or bring them down another string. So it's a good thing to practice. And try, so uh, what I want you to do is, if you don't have them already, the nine essential chords also in the free course that I give you at yourguitarstage.com slash 30, um, I teach you these nine essential chords, the ones that will literally allow you to play millions of songs. So pr go through those, the B7, you know. And what I'm doing here is I'm just doing outside picking, but then I'm moving the thumb around to either the sixth and fifth string or the sixth and fourth string or the fifth and fourth string, depending on whatever the chord is. So and this is the cool thing about, another cool thing about Finger style guitar is that if I have a chord here, it's kind of hard to mess up, right? If I was playing, if I was arpeggiating on the piano, I could mess up. I could hit all sorts of keys. But if I hold that C chord here, I could just, I'm hitting something right. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm hitting something right because I'm only playing the right chord here, right? So, but I could, I could go back and forth between the, the, the bass line of a C and an E. E. C, E, easy enough. I could even throw in a, I could throw in that G, that low G. Make sense? Okay, so that's something I want you to practice now is take you know you got the resting position you got the the first exercise and then what i want you to do now obviously you're not going to do it right now you're going to do it after the broadcast well first you're going to buy that course because you know it's going to take you where you need to take it take you and then you're going to practice this that's going to get your get, get your feet wet okay so that'll be the next order of business is doing that okay and then and then of course moving that bass note around if you'd like okay <laughs> So if I'm playing this E minor chord, in fact, I wrote a tune that uh, that that basically, well, it's not even. Um, I didn't I didn't write the tune. I created an arrangement for a song that's on piano uh, by by Sufjan Stevens. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, but nonetheless, uh, I like what I'm doing here because I like what the bass line is doing because the bass line has a motif. A motif is a musical idea or a hook, something that brings you in, something that's, that's, um, um, that has a pattern, something that's symmetrical that you go, hmm, man, that sounds familiar, or there's something about it that I like. And so in this case here, listen to the bass line. So the bass lines is moving around a lot. So you can do all sorts of different things with this. It's really endless. And people will say, well, how do you know what to do? 
man, this is art. So you get to do whatever it is that you want. Now, following some people who uh, show you some patterns like I do, show you some songs like I do, whatever. Like, you know, you start learning these patterns, you start learning these riffs, if you will, less riffs, more patterns, uh, and that will est help establish your foundation in this as well, okay? Okay, good. Um, real quick, let's just check for any questions that we may have, and then we're gonna keep going, okay? All right, Soham is saying, hey Eric, how do I expand my phrases that I come up with into a whole song? Okay, I'm gonna, Soham, since we're talking about fingerstyle today, uh, I'm gonna assume that you mean fingerstyle here. So how do I expand my phrases that I come up with into a whole song? Okay, so the, again, we're going to, we're talking about motifs here. So in this case here, I knew that the chord progression was, Um, e minor, D, uh, B, B minor, G. Okay, so I knew that was a chord progression. And I started off going, I liked that. It stays on these chords for kind of, I don't know, fairly long time. Uh, and so the longer you're on a chord, if you don't want it to get boring, you need to bring some life into it. There needs to be some sort of movement, some sort of melody. In this case here, it's uh, mainly in the it's mainly in the bass line. So you do that to create excitement, to create something that listeners like, what's going on there? And in this case here, the it's like, Sorry. So it has a real specific motif, a specific pattern, and it kind of pulls your ear in because we got this bum, bum, bum. So it's like a, de a definitive rhythmic motif and then it fits within the chords and it moves along and it pulls you and what have you. So, so, um, so what you want to do is you want to, you know, take your chord progression, you take your song and you want to say, okay, what can I do with this? So like in the case of an E minor, I know I could, I can play those bass lines down there. Um, I knew I needed to go to a D chord. But in order for me to play the bass line that I wanted, I couldn't play a standard D chord. So I gotta play this toughy here. And I also wanted this sound. Because the song is very sobering sounding, because uh, the subject matter is. And so I wanted that, I wanted that dissonance in there, okay? Um, and that, is a, there's the third, is this, I'm basically turning this into a add nine chord, okay? I'm adding a nine. And so, what I do is I take, basically, to answer your question, what I do is I take my assets, in this case, the chords, E minor, D, B minor, G. I take those chords, and in my mind, I know, okay, well, I know notes go along with that, you would too, if you if you haven't gone through the free course already, it'll show you that, uh, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Um, and so basically I explain that, you know, the chords and the melodies, they're the same and they work together. We learn that major scale. In this case, it's a minor key, but it, it's a derivative of the major scale. So if you know G major, you know E minor. And so what I do is I say, okay, well, I want to create this motif. I know these are my chords. And so I want to create this rhythmic motif or I want to create this this pattern. I mean, what you notice is that I just stayed on those, those high strings. You know? And so that is a pattern. It, it, it's something that I'm sticking to that, that makes it cohesive, if you will. So at the end of the day, Sohan, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create enough 
variants that we keep the listener's ear listening, right? Just like any good art piece, we want to entice, we want to move people emotionally. If not, they're not gonna listen or they're not gonna watch. So it has to be something that pulls them in. Patterns do that, symmetry does that. If it's too far out there, see jazz fusion, it, you lose people, right? Jazz fusion's cool, but there's a reason that it's not playing on pop radios because it loses a lot of people because it's complex and it, there's not a lot to hang on to. So you want to create something that is in whatever happy medium that you want to where it's interesting enough, but not so repetitive, so simplistic that, um, you know, because nursery rhymes are, are plenty uh, repetitive and plenty hooky, but they're sometimes too hooky and too repetitive and they, they lose, they, they lose something because they're kind of boring, right? Sometimes, unless you're a little kid. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. The bear. Thank you so much. This song is great. For those of you that do not like the F chord, check out the effing F chord. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Iva. I wrote a song using the blocked C chord. I think you probably mean that right there, right? Like a, do you mean a bar chord blocked? I'm assuming either way, listening to you play today has shown me how to add bass notes to break the monotony of music. Yeah. Excellent. Iva and Iva, if you haven't already, the very last video in the free course that I'm giving you today, your guitar slash 30, you might find a link for it somewhere in the description as well. But, um, do go through those exercises because they're going to show you even more and they're quite extensive, okay? And they're absolutely free to you. Uh, for those of you that are really want to delve in real serious about fingerstyle guitar, we've got the course on sale today. We just dropped it and tons of folks are getting in it already. And um, yeah, you're going to get out for, for a massive discount today. So you'll see the link for that as well, okay? Okay. Uh, please like and share. Absolutely. Thank you, Bear fan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Adil, kindly tell me tips of right arm practice at home exercise. Okay, Adil, the last video in UGS standard. I'm giving it to you for free today. Yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Get that, okay? Get access to that course. It's, it's literally completely free. Do the exercises. There's a PDF in there that's got all sorts of exercises, step by step. You know, to go through that. All right. Okay. Uh, Dennis is saying, is this course included in Unlimited? It's included in UGS Pro. Okay. So basically, if you are a member of, of Unstoppable Guitar System Pro, yes, this is in there. Okay. Uh, the videos are in there. I'm not sure how we're going to disperse it yet, where we're going to put it. It may be in your My Library. I haven't discussed that yet. We're going to talk, talk with Mike today. Okay, the open C chord, I was saying. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Marine Mama. Go pro. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Mike just said it. Okay, uh, we'll be included in UGS coming in the next day or so. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much. All right, let's see where we're at with time. We got 12 more minutes. Let's, uh, let's keep going, all right? So you now you've, you've, you've got the block um, chords to work with. I'm, I'm following Iva's lead here. Uh, Iva's lead block chords. You got the standard uh, uh, essential chords that you can do this with and you should do this with, right? Just because you get the concept here right now doesn't mean you have it. It means you got the concept, right? Just like with my son, if I show him, well, this is how, this is how you do a karate kick or whatever. Just because you, oh, I got it, Dad. No, you don't. You got to do it about 10,000 times to even get close. So get going, boy, you know? So um, you got to practice things, right, for them to become part of you. So do that. If you want to be good at this, you have to practice. But here's the cool thing. There's nothing stopping you from being whatever it is that you desire on the guitar, fingerstyle or otherwise. The only thing that's stopping you, and there's nothing stopping you, it's just the difference between where you're at and where you want to be is practice. That's it. When I learned that, it blew my mind. I know it sounds very logical and we all agree, but well, not everybody. Some people go, oh no, you've got to be born with some talent. You just definitely do. Which is why so many babies, you know, so, so they are right when they say that because there's so many babies that are born with the talent that they just start singing and playing right away, right? And they become architects and everything else as babies, right? Because we see this all the time. So you must, 
be able to be just born with talent. No, but you know what I mean, Eric. You know what I mean. You gotta have them. No, I don't know what you mean. You practice. The only things that you do naturally are pee and poop and eat, cry maybe. That's it. Everything else is learned. All right, prove me wrong. You can't, because it doesn't. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry. Um, okay, beginner here, and probably answered before. Should you grow your fingernails or clipped fingernails is fine. Which one should be longer? Not, not longer. If you're gonna have nails, they don't have to be that long. Yes, I did cover it at the beginning of the program, so watch that over again, Anthony. I do cover that in the program, which I give you for free today. Not the finger style program. That one, that one is, a, is a premium course. But yourguitarsage.com slash 30, I talk about this in more detail. Essentially, if you're playing nylon string, definitely use nails. If you're playing steel string, it's optional. I'm kind of in the minority. I use nails, but most steel string players don't because they get chipped up and what have you. It's a lot of maintenance. I do it because I like the sound of it. Okay? Okay. All right, here we go. We got nine minutes, friends. Let's keep going. And oh, by the way, if I didn't tell you, we dropped our long-awaited fingerstyle course today below. It's my direct method for playing fingerstyle guitar. Long-awaited uh, 59 videos, I think it is. 59 videos is basically like four courses in one. Uh, get it today, friends. It's a an absolute banger, okay? All right, so now um, I'm glad that we have time to do this because I'm going to go over it with you and I don't see any more questions at the moment. But let's talk a minute for, uh, for just one second here about something called Travis picking. So Travis picking is like this... Uh, Okay. And it's got this certain sound, right? You've heard it before. Merle Travis made it famous. What's why it's called Travis Picking. Uh, Chet Atkins, um, Les Paul, Tommy Emmanuel, Joe Robinson. We know, know and love Joe. Uh, a lot of guys use this because it's cool. And, and basically it's this. The thumb bounces back and forth between a couple different bass notes, at least a couple different bass notes. And it's the thumb specifically. So like you could, uh, when I played the kids, right? I'm playing a, a bouncing bass line. Right? But I'm doing it with fingers. I'm, I'm doing it with my thumb and my first finger. thumb and first finger. What Travis Picking says is, is you're doing this. You know. So it's just your thumb doing the movement. Now why would you do that? Well, Number one, there are licks, there are, uh, this is just a style, is it frees up those other fingers to do some different things. And when you're playing this way, you're being your first finger is your, is your most active finger uh, for playing melodies. So if it's busy playing a bass line like I did in, in MGMT, it's not gonna be able to do other things. I say in MGMT, in the song Kids. It's not gonna be able to do any other, any other thing. That being said, for that particular song, it doesn't require it. So, you know, there's different styles. You know, if you're are arpeggiating through things, we're not doing it either. Right? So, and then for this one, for kids, I'm, I'm using first and thumb. Or thumb and first finger, yes. And so, Travis Picking is just another way. Now, you're not going to probably learn this one today because you're going to need the tablature. And that, of course, is in our finger style course. But, essentially, um, you start off with that thumb doing this kind of back and forth thing. I'm playing, I'm playing a C chord here, and I'm going back and forth between a C and an E bass note. And if I got that thumb going on, then I can do a series of pinch picks. And this is the part that I cover in the intermediate and advanced 
And when I say advanced, friends, it just means it's a higher, you know, you don't start off in the advanced, you start off on the easy stuff, okay, then intermediate and then advanced. But you need it, okay, because it's going to allow you to do some really exceptional things. So I got this, um, this thumb going back and forth, right? Then I can pinch pick. A pinch pick is when we pick two things at once. So in this case here, if I'm on the fifth and second strings at once, I can kind of uh, crab claw it here and then pull my hand away from the guitar and I have a pinch pick I hear it's like I'm pinching the strings so I can do that with thumb and first thumb and second thumb and third and so with a series of that you know So I'm doing a series of pinch picks and some other some other things in there, but it's not very complex. And then you can move that to different chords. So I can just take that same pattern. That's A minor, and now I'm back to the C. Let's see. That was a hallelujah there, but just uh, done with some Travis picking, right? So I show you Travis picking in there and I start you off step by step. Friends like anything, I just was telling my UGS folks, this is my whole philosophy on teaching guitar and really anything in life cut out the crap that you don't need, right? So if you're learning guitar and there are a million things that you can learn about guitar, and there's probably a million things. If you can, if you can just learn, say like the 500 things that you're gonna use like all the time, it's probably not even that much. It's, let's say there's, say, say there's a thousand things to know about the guitar, but if you just knew these 20 things you would literally be able to play 99 percent of the time that's how i like to think about life that's how i like because we are all limited on time right and resources and everything else uh even with an abundant mindset you're still limited in this three-dimensional world so uh we it would make sense for us to cut out stuff that we don't need and i do that whenever i'm teaching it's what i do in these courses well, that's why i call it my my direct method um, and so I cut out everything you don't need or won't use for a very, very, very long time. You'll get to it eventually in life and then you'll be like, ah, that was a waste of time. Or you'll learn it and it'll take a long time to learn it and you're like, ah, cool, I could do that one little thing there. I'm going to use that for one song. The rest of the time I'm doing this 99% of the time. So that's the way I like to teach. Take out all the stuff you don't use, focus on the stuff that you use, and then do it in real specific step-by-step -step order so you can't mess up. That's exactly how I created this course. There's a reason why it's 59 videos and not 60 videos or 58 videos. And there's a reason why there's four sections in it. And you're gonna learn a ton of stuff without getting in the weeds because that's the way that I teach. Not only that, have it for 59 days and after 59 days you're like, Eric, I don't want it anymore. Uh, then I'll give you 100% of your money back because that's the way we roll because we don't want anybody to have something that, you know, bad mouthing us online or something like that. We want you to be happy and we don't need money from people who don't like the course, so which we don't really have that. So there you go. All right, let me um, look real, real quick, friends. Um, I know we're ending here, but let me go ahead and, and make sure there's no questions. Uh, and by the way, friends, if you're wanting that course, first, uh, I believe it's the first link below. Again, if you're like, if you're the kind of person that you're like, I have zero money and I'll never have any money ever in my life and I'm never going to buy anything, but I do like your teaching, Eric, then please take advantage of my free course that I have for you, uh, the Unstoppable Guitar System Standard, okay? Literally like 36 videos of the most important foundational videos that you'll ever use in your life. I'm not lying or playing or exaggerating. Um, take advantage of that. YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. 
What's up, Rick in Illinois? Um, okay, beautiful. Just making sure. TC, what's up, friends? Oh, I'm in the old... Hold on. Let me make sure there's no other last ones here. So, Manuel, he's saying, do you have any free courses? I do. I do, friend. Um, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Uh, so, um, what do I think about deja vu? I experience it. Uh, I'm one of those weird people, though. I, I believe in, uh, to some degree, simulation theory, and I believe that uh, our thoughts create outcomes and what have you, which is... It's not fringe or weird, it's just that's the reality. If I decide I want to shoot up some drugs tomorrow, it's going to change the course of my life. Um, if I decide that I want to you know, help the world in some way, it's going to change the course of my life. So that's literally the way we think. Um, nothing crazy there. Uh, but I do believe in stuff that is related to that. That's a deep subject. That Do you have any free courses for us poor folks? YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. It's literally the most valuable lessons that you will ever go through. Um, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a 10x your money back if you don't feel the same. Um, okay. Well, uh, my, my nails are cut short. However, once in a while my ring finger catches the nail even though I'm trying to just use the finger. What am I doing wrong? Uh, Rick, I'd say cut those nails back even further, but um, if you, you know, if you lay your finger more like this as opposed to curled, then you're probably, then you're going to be less likely to, to, to catch the, the ring, uh, to catch the fingernail, okay? Uh, beautiful. Thank you, Iva. Welcome. Um, please say hello to me when you do get in there. Would love to, uh, would love to say hi to you. Manuel, thank you so much. I don't know who, uh, oh, Frederick Node. Yeah, sure. Beautiful. Thank you so much, friend. I really appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey, indeed. Thank you so much, friend. All right. Um, I have another broadcast that I'm going to be doing for my UGS folks, for my UGS pro folks. So if you, friends, are getting into um, fingerstyle guitar, I've got the medicine for what ails you, four courses in one, my direct method. Again, it's a no-brainer. Take advantage of this at this wicked low price, okay? And if for some reason, it's not going to happen, but if it does happen and you don't like it, if that, ever, if that should happen, you got 59 days, let me know. I will give you 100% of your money back, absolutely guaranteed, I, I no qualms with that. I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I've got a great reputation with folks online. So, um, because that's, because I like to be treated with respect, and I treat people with respect. So, um, you would get 100% of your money back, no questions asked. I'm not even concerned about it, okay? My desire is to help you play guitar to the best of your ability. I've got a thousand plus videos online for free for you, giving you this free course today at yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Yes, I do have a paid course because these lights, these cameras, these monitors, this guitar, this room, everything actually costs money and I do need to buy stuff. And so I, uh, this is what I do for a living. So whatever it is that you do for a living, that's, this is my thing, what I do. And I love it. And so I'm here to help you friends in any way that I can, please let me know. Leave those comments before. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like this video. Love you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, friends, if you're in UGS Pro, I'm going live with you guys in 26 minutes. Uh, just look in your email for that, uh, for that invitation. All right, friends, see ya. I'm out of here. Thanks so much for watching and take advantage of the courses. Links are below. See ya.